This is because of different things, including climate change, the pandemic, the weak economic growth, and recently the war. In this complex con complex context that we are in, it is important to have strong social um, programs and have a good reach to the extreme poverty. We are foreseeing that we will have more poverty in the urban zones because of the price crisis of food. So this has been recognized as something decisive in the uh, agenda 2023. Social protection can fight the interrelated causes of poverty and hunger. In this webinar, we are going to focus on how to improve the different indexes in uh, protection. We are going to talk about social protection that wants to support the national governments in the strength of their own social assistance pro programs to create a positive impact in the population. Now I would like to greet our guests today, our colleagues from the FAO, from the UDP, and representatives of governments of Paraguay, the Dominican Republic as well. And thank you very much for being here with us today. To all of our participants, I want to tell you that we have simultaneous interpretation into English and we are also in the link that we're also going to be sharing with you in these channels. You can also follow us in uh, Twitter uh, at FAO America using the hashtags conference uh, online FAO, uh, hashtag uh, social uh, food security, FAO online conferences, food security and uh, social protection. I would like to explain the webinar's uh, policy briefly. We will start with some welcoming words from uh, Alejandro Wins, who is uh, working in social protection in FAO Rome. Apart from that, we are going to have Veronica Webster. She is a specialist in uh, social programs and she works in RLC in FAO social protection programs. She will talk about uh, social protection and food security. Apart from that, uh, Julia Palma, she is a specialist in nutrition from the FAO, will give us a brief presentation about the online course that was developed by the FAO for the application of the, of the tool. After that, we will start the round table with the different experiences and challenges to transform the social policies and programs to into uh, food security. And for that, we'll have the presence of uh, Calio Cáceres. He's a vice minister of policies, public policies, from the Social Ministry of Paraguay and Mrs. Chavez, she works in the investigation process uh, department of Paraguay. Mary Santango, she is a coordinator of economic programs of the Superate program in the Dominican Republic. And Santiago Guayasamin, he is a head uh, person in the, in the child security uh, program from Ecuador. So after the presentations, we'll have a Q&A session, and we invite you to leave your questions in the chat throughout the presentations. Mrs. Nihil, uh, working from the nutrition uh, program in the FAO, will give us some closing remarks. So to start, I will give the floor to Alejandra Ginsburg to give us some uh, welcoming words. So Alejandro. Puedes continuar, por favor. El problema pareciera ser del señor Alejandro. Nosotros vamos a atenderle de manera interna por mensajes internos. Por favor, continúa. Mauricio, could you continue? The problem apparently is with uh, Alejandro. Yes, apparently we are having some technical difficulties with the audio of Alejandro, but for that, um, we are going to move forward a little bit with the agenda and we are going to give the floor to uh, Veronica Whiteside. She will give us a presentation about the tools of the ISPA and the role to give a framework, a coherent framework for the analysis of social protection. And with that, help the countries and governments to identify actions for policies to improve the design and the implementation of their programs and uh, social protection actions. So, Veronica, please go ahead. Thank you, and uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining this webinar. It's a great pleasure um, to be here and share with you the experience of having developed a suit of interagency social protection assessment 
tools, uh, ISPA tools, um, of which the food security and nutrition tool is one. I'm going to set the scene a little bit explaining about the full suite of ISPA tools that are already available and under development. Um, and then Maya will uh, continue with um, a more focused presentation of the food security and nutrition tool. So the ISPA tools um, provide an, a coherent analytical framework um, to analyze the, the strengths and weaknesses and performance of the social protection system at various levels. Um, so there are system level tools. It's, it's a whole set of tools, a suite of tools. The system level tools are, first of all, to do a review of the entire social protection system or specific aspects like financing, for example, is also considered, is considered a system level tool. At the second level, there are program level tools, and this is where the food security and nutrition tool is, is set. So, so at that level, it's either a specific program that is being analyzed or a specific risk or contingency or object, objective, such as food security and nutrition. And for the time being, there's also a tool available to assess public works programs. And then at the third level, these are the set of tools that are really looking at specific delivery aspects. Um, such as identification systems for social protection schemes and programs or payment systems or other delivery aspects. Um, of course, the system level, the program level and the delivery level, they are important um, for, for every activity at social protection. So all the tools have some notion of, of all three levels. It's just a matter of where the focus sits. Um, and all tools also share in common that they have the same elements that they are made up of. There is always a guidance node that provides the conceptual framework for um, the topic under consideration. So um, for food security and nutrition, this was, would still give an introduction on the basic key concepts and terminology around social protection. But then also everything that's related to food security and nutrition, that is the must know in, in order to... Um, to carry forward a meaningful analysis. Secondly, there is um, the data collection framework. And, and this is typically um, a set of questions that are important to ask or collect data on for um, that given area of analysis. Um, and uh, I will come to this later, but it is important that we are trying to, be, to build generic tools that are um, comprehensive, and that's why sometimes they, they seem a bit overwhelming. There's one tool that has over 600 questions listed. Um, so the first step in any tool application is always to adapt the tool to the specific objective of the analysis and to the country context and adjust the complexity of the analysis to the objectives and the resources available. And I will explain this um, further later on. Um, and then after the data collection framework, a key, the key output basically from a tool application is an overview of the finding based on certain agreed indicators um, and criteria. And one key strength of these tools are also that they are interagency. The ILO jointly with the World Bank is le leading the initiative um, on, these, is on building these interagency tools. Um, but most of the relevant uh, UN system sister organizations that do work on social protection are part of this, like the FAO, UNICEF, WFP, um, UN, UN Women, et cetera. So this is, this is really, but also bilateral partners, um, uh, other development banks, et cetera. So this is really, there's more than 25 um, agencies that contribute with their expertise to build these tools. And these can really be seen as the consensus of what is the, the must have for carrying out the analysis. And it's also a good starting point in many countries to say, this is agency neutral. It has jointly been agreed, been agreed by agency and thereby can facilitate multi-stakeholder work on this. Um, and this is just a, a generic overview of the ISPA tools. And I hand over to either back to Mauricio or over to Maya for the next intervention. Gracias, eh, Veronica. Y antes de darle el, el pase a, a Thank Max. you very much, Veronica. And before going to Maya, um, now that we have been able to solve um, pro the problems that Alejandro had, um, 
I will give the floor to Alejandro so that he can tell us about his work. Thank you, Alejandro. Can you hear me now? I am very, uh, I apologize. I'm glad we were able to uh, fix it. Good afternoon to each and every one of you. I am no longer opening the meeting, but you have heard uh, Veronica, well, she has given a general uh, viewpoint. It's called ISPA tool in uh, English, Interagency Social Protection Assessment. It's one of the many uh, tools. It's called Diagnosis on Social Pre um, and Food Security and Nutrition is the version in Spanish. I will not stop with the tool itself because it will be referred to by Maya, but I did want to explain why FAO and other partners decided to take on this task, this task of teaching this tool. In the last 20 years, no, uh, uh, based on the pandemic, as my Mauricio mentioned, our countries have made major efforts to obtain a fiscal fund for social protection. There are many massive uh, uh, pensions that are contributive, non-contributive, uh, school um, uh, feeding systems, and so on. We know that in normal conditions, these programs of uh, social protection improve the uh, food security of people. It increases mostly the household income. It helps the ingest of uh, food, improve their nutrition and diversify diets. In this sense, there's a great deal of information. It's more weak. Um, and that which relates to social protection programs on malnutrition. It is not something that we should be uh, um, uh, alarmed for uh, or surprised because there's many things that are linked to food intake, the practices of care of children, the selection of the diet and the manner in which they are prepared and many other factors uh, play a role here and also the social protection programs and how they incite in the process. And this has been increasing in the world at an alarming amount uh, in the last period. Overweight, obesity affect more than 300 million people in the region. This is what has taken us uh, uh, to FAO and other agencies to generate this tool that uh, we are presented to the most important uh, system is to provide countries a tool by which with their protection, uh, social protection program and how to improve it, how to adjust the uh, existing programs, how to articulate them, how to complement them with other programs and link themselves with new programs to improve and provide uh, in, uh, in, in, in better improvements to have better nutrition with the resources that are already available. If this was important before, it is even more important today. And it is something that cannot be um, left behind in that which relates to nutrition and food security before the pandemic, it increased between 2015 and 2024, 21, uh, adding 10 million people with people uh, with hunger in the, fa in the same manner as of 2014, there has been a great uh, uh, overweight, there's a, uh, it has the highest prevalence in the world and there is an accentuation of food security and malnutrition uh, under gender is issues also if before the pandemic we had a grim uh, landscape you can imagine what it looks like now today we are seeing in our region and in the rest of the world problems in uh, and the um, destruction of uh, the supply chain that began before the pandemic. Our countries are being affected, uh, their income because of the price of fertilizers, uh, gasoline, and of course food, the maritime issues based on logistics and the prices of energy, in addition to the lack of natural disasters that are more frequent and severe given climate change. And if that was little, the war in Ukraine has come to increase and add um, issues as far as food uh, supplies, uh, the inflationary um, 
profiles that have been uh, present since 2021. And now the um, commercial uh, wars that some have been facing given the situation in Ukraine. In our region and in other region, countries have reacted, uh, activating social protection uh, programs for uh, more uh, to support more vulnerable people in the situation given this inflationary as is Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Guyana, uh, Dominican Republic, other and other countries have taken action to increase support and expanding the coverage of social uh, uh, pre-existing programs and adding new programs like the protected uh, food basket in Chile. Uh, uh, the challenge is how do we make sure that the impacts of the nutritional state of our population that are more in under uh, favorable, defavorable conditions, uh, those impacts be as little as possible. Therefore, we will show you a diagnosis tool between uh, nutritional and social um, protection assessment and nutrition, and we are available from FAO to help all the countries in our region to take on and implement this tool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alejandro, for these words and above all for this vision, so broad a vision of this phenomena and how to implement this tool. And who better than Maya Takagi to show us how it works? How do we eat, how do we eat and how do uh, we present um, and how do we work with this tool? Maya, when you're ready, please let me know. Thank you, Mauricio, Alejandro, and all the colleagues that are here as panelists uh, for our, our government um, officers, agencies, and mainly those that support us and help us in this virtual seminar. I am going to do the best I can with the time allotted to me uh, and make the differences so that you can have more detailed information about this tool. And I have the support of my colleagues that will be projecting my presentation. As Alejandro Mauricio just made it, we will present this diagnosis tool on social protection and food security and uh, nutritional and food security to uh, support governments that have social protection programs, as Alejandro was mentioning, they are fundamental for uh, food security and that they're more responsive in the nutritional standpoint. Uh, now we're going to go through these four topics, the links of uh, social protection, the scope of this tool, and and some topics related to the criteria behind this diagnosis and how the application processes of ISPA and FSN, uh, the Food Security and Nutrition. Of course, this tool has a group of evidences that we have identified to analyze the determining factors of, this, of, of malnutrition and undernutrition whether it's positive or negative. So we, we have uh, basic immediate causes or basic causes. The undernutrition, of course, you can see the structure where we see the maternal and uh, infant uh, um, nutrition. And then there are other income, access to a household, the quantity, the quality, the resources of the land, education, employment, income, and the technological uh, income uh, or knowledge. So these are elements that uh, link uh, so that you can have policies that have to do with the access. So we have to take into consideration uh, the consequences on a short-term basis and on the long-term basis, which are influential in various generations. Um, to act now foresees consequences towards the future, not only for this child or this family, but for the future generations to come. 
uh, making it very clear and important to understand that there is a social protection that is sensitive to nutrition. Another uh, pillar has, uh, considering the four pillars, when we talk about food security, because we talk a lot about uh, physical and economic access, notwithstanding that, we have to have that availability of the food. In different contexts, it has to be available uh, in different contexts, local, international, community, and so on. But we have it has to be stable. There should not be fluctuations or 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 dependent on seasonality or economic or political instability, as we have seen with the pandemic and the conflict to uh, Russia and Ukraine, which has generated an in a very strong increase on the prices of food. The use, the fact that if it is available and it's there, it doesn't mean that the body is in a situation uh, that will take uh, advantage of these diverse nutrients. So we have to care for the preparation of food, the cleanliness and the quality of the diet, these four elements will be referred to in the next slide. Social protection can have a fundamental role in these four pillars. Access obviously is directly uh, linked to income or in kind, uh, not only um, the transfer of income, but in many countries it, it is transferred of in kind um, this is also uh, the school um, food programs, which is very important for children. And indirectly, it can be a agricultural production increase and the diversification, diversification, sorry, of the um, uh, livelihoods. There is an extreme part in areas of so the improvement of the income in rural areas allow people uh, to uh, have a better uh, food security, and it's uh, productive also to create a new demands for more food, fresh foods and healthy foods. The stability, of course, of uh, to avoid people from having uh, vulnerability situations with better uh, with avoiding crisis and that they fall again under this threshold of food insecurity and of course the utilization uh, simultaneously to create patterns of food consumption that can satisfy uh, the fundamental uh, diets uh, for example combining education access to health services and um, sanitary conditions that are fundamental for this uh, context. Uh, so the main message uh, on this about this tool, of course, are the, re the results of social protection in food security are not automatic. And there are topics of uh, high impact that are based on this model, but also with the implementation. Uh, so the idea is to uh, take this apart, identify the principles, uh, the principles that are associated to this program, the promotion of the link with different social health and sanitary uh, sectors uh, and the agricultural and of course, productive uh, areas. Uh, at this site that Veronica presented, www.ispatools.org, we already have this available in English and in Spanish. All these tools are available. And uh, on this site, you have this tool that's specifically linked to nutrition and uh, food security and social protection. I will go very quickly now. So what are the objectives of this tool? To identify and comprehend potential existing elements in the social assistance or assessment program uh, support uh, synergies and dialogue around uh, programs and social uh, um, assistance systems. 
uh, we need to contribute to design social assistance programs that are more responsive and sensitive to ESPA, um, understand the social protection focus to improve and coordinate uh, in relevant sectors, identify opportunities for uh, capacity development, and also contribute to the generation of evidence um, uh, information on ISPA. We uh, work with this criteria to analyze uh, some sort of self-analysis, if you will, of the program performance based on uh, on its responsiveness uh, for uh, food security and nutrition. So we need to have explicit objectives on the design facilitates communication, the comprehension of the society at large to understand what this program is about and how it helps and how what it responds to to work with the four dimensions that I've mentioned is uh, significant and this needs to be explicit. We need to understand the eligibility and focalize it if it includes criteria linked to food security and vulnerability of the population as far as food insecurity. That strategy of focalizing needs to be transmitted and disseminated to the population at large so that those people that are under those conditions can be served uh, as in time and uh, with foresight. Uh, also, the capacity to respond based on uh, distance. There are areas that are very distant that are, to, are, are not reached by uh, adequate uh, dissemination of communication programs, the capacity to uh, adapt to the uh, delivery of the services, the duration, the stability, the time. It's important that stability is considered, but it is not only the amount, but the periodicity and the, pre the foresight or prevision, if you will, so that it's understood on the long term. And the last one is the uh, response capacity. Sorry, the previous one, the uh, the response capacity, the capacity to adapt to the changes uh, that are needed, prices that are exposed, like political, economic, economic, and sanitary. This took place in the during the pandemic in many countries in the region. They had to undergo or the money or the beneficiaries or and everything uh, was very fast. And this was a major process and a, a learning curve for, uh, for many in general. Next, please. The institutional capacity, of course, to have responsible players on social protection and the uh, social protection and nutrition and the program were very well defined to have qualified staff to understand how to deal with uh, issues of uh, nutrition, um, a clear uh, criteria in that which relates, relates to rights. It must be understood from the society. This is not a favor from uh, the government. It, they have a right to receive the programs and that they must be guaranteed in a dignified manner. And uh, uh, the, uh, the sustainability, of course, uh, we say there has to be social, environmental, economic, not only uh, sustainability uh, from the social standpoint, but we also have to add a sustainability and contribute with the adaptation of climate change in all manners. And we also have to have uh, economic sustainability for families and also, and also to have coherence with the system. This is important. This refers to political strategies, uh, which is comprehensive with the social programs and other elements such as health, sanitary, social inclusion, agricultural, and uh, the workplace. This uh, very quick 
significant ways to mention this process. It identifies uh, programs and uh, oh, you choose the information that's pertinent. You analyze the information and you generate a report at a national level. This is very simplified and there is a, a result there which is a sort of newsletter or journal, and we will go uh, given time constraints. Each criteria identifies a group of questions. Um, this the criteria that has to do with inclusiveness. And uh, we have a group uh, that identifies the weaknesses and the strengths in terms of their criteria. Is it latent? It is moderate. Is it emerging and is it uh, advanced? In this newsletter or journal, as we call it, it identifies the stakeholders and identify how to improve. It's not an assessment of the program. It's a self-analysis of your strengths and weaknesses and uh, a collective commitment for improvement. That's what the tool provides. Finalizing, you can go to the next, please. And also in the next presentation, dear Julia, I uh, wanted to state that there are two courses online. One promotes these links uh, between food security, nutrition, and social protection with uh, basic um, introductory concepts and principles. And one that's been launched today, which has to do with this tool. It is a, cool, a course rather that will be presented by our next speaker. Thank you very much, Mauricio. Thank you, uh, Maya, for that extraordinary presentation. It is a very interesting topic, as you stated, uh, how to land these rights um, uh, for social protection and take on efficient uh, tools. This is uh, and a great opportunity. And now we have the opportunity to listen from Julia Palma, who is a specialist in of pro nutritional programs, who will be presenting on this online course uh, with the application of this tool. Thank you very much, Mauricio. I am going to share my screen. Thank you very much, Mauricio, for the introduction. I am going to uh, talk about the electronic uh, course about the ISPA FUN. The course has been developed as a diagnosis tool to adopt uh, remote adoption and implementation and create a file about academic uh, evidence about links between nutrition and social protection, and a guideline about how to transform the different protection, social protection systems towards better nutrition. The course is based on the, the tool that you already know, but it has been updated with important uh, latest trends. For example, um, systems for agroalimentary systems, uh, malnutrition forums, as uh, accessibility, um, healthy diets and the pandemic. It is an interactive course with evaluation tests, um, videos, examples, best practices, and it has many resources available. After uh, last test, you can get a certifi certification with a digital um, validation. The course has been published recently, just yesterday, so I'm very happy to be able to present this today. Uh, the course is available in English, and as all courses of the FAO, it is a, a free access. The course is called Transforming Protection Systems Towards uh, Food Security and Nutritional uh, Security. The tool of diagnosis is by FSN is divided into two courses. The first one is the link between uh, food security, nutrition, and social protection, introduction to concepts and basic uh, concepts, where we are also going to present the impacts of the social protection programs about the different components of the agroalimentary uh, system and also the different ways of malnutrition. 
And also we are going to uh, talk about the conditions and the foods that will allow us to improve the impacts on food security in these programs. The course number two, the whole ISPA FSN evaluation of social assistance toward a better nutrition and food security that is structured in the key areas of the tool and also uh, through a scenario will uh, simulate the, the application of the different tools for a social assistance program. The two courses together have a duration of about two and a half hours. Here you have some examples of the course. Now about the uh, audience, this is for well, government authorities and administrators of programs that are working for the social development systems, uh, ministries or similar, and also govern, government authorities, professionals of uh, development national or international, and researchers that work in food security, nutrition, and social protection. Also agencies and partners of uh, relevant development. I want to also inform you that on November 16th, we're going to be presenting the course with a webinar that has been organized by the Academia of Electronic Learning from the FAO, and I am going to share with you the uh, link in the chat. The next stages will be the monitoring of use and type of user of the course, the promotion from the other uh, agencies that are involved in the development of the tool, and the dissemination at a country level, the development of uh, capabilities through uh, training that is directed to policymakers and translator translation to other languages, Spanish and French. Thank you very much for your attention. Julia, thank you very much for that presentation. And before going to the next phase of this webinar, I wanted to tell you that we have more than 500 people connected right now. So I think that we are getting to a lot of people that are interested in getting to know the tool better and also the course that Julia has just presented to us. Um, right now, we will start the round table where the different representatives of Paraguay, the Dominican Republic and Ecuador will be telling us about their challenges to transform the social protection programs towards something sensitive to nutrition and also food security. We will hear Clayo Cáceres and Rebeca Chávez from the uh, Social Ministry of Paraguay uh, that will tell us about the Paraguayan, um, the Paraguayan experience in the, exp in the participation in this program. They will talk about the contributions to the tool to strengthen the uh, transference of knowledge in this context. So Cayo, please go ahead. You have the floor. I don't know if you can hear us, if you can or cannot hear us. Uh, thank you very much, Mauricio. I want to greet you all from Cayo Cáceres. He needed to go to other uh, meetings, so um, he should be here with us, but it was not possible. So I will be uh, talking about this presentation alone. Um, right now, I am sharing my screen. I hope that you can all see it. I want to really thank the invitation from FAO to participate in this webinar. And I hope that you that we all have the opportunity to share the experience that the MDF had in um, applying the tool in a very early stage in those years between the year 2017 and 2018. So as Mauricio mentioned, the tool has been applied to the Tecopomona program, Teco Boroa program of Paraguay is a program of monetary transference with co-responsibility that has uh, apart from the monetary transference of uh, families uh, in vulnerable situations, we also have the community and social accompanying uh, for people, people that are in the territories um, accompanying the families. This program, uh, just for you to get to know about how important it is, it gets to more than 160,000 families um, nationally. And I am going to focus on sharing findings 
and mainly the experience, how we were developing all of this, how we were applying this tool in Paraguay. In the years 2017 and 2018, in the first year, we uh, shaped up um, a diagnosis group that was participating. We were about five people in the technical and the administrative areas of the MDS with experts from the FAO. So along with this diagnosis team, we had a coordinating team by the high management of the MDS and also the high management of, of FAO representatives in Paraguay. And after that, we had the process of applying the tool and Paraguay was one of the first countries to apply this tool. So it gave us another dynamic to the process because, well, that is what we want to share in the stages of the application. This meant to us several adaptations because we're the first country to apply it. So we follow the phases that the instrument was proposing for uh, guidelines of the of the tools. We're in the phase number one in preparation and diagnosis. Um, mainly, we had an emphasis in the um, in the orientation and the meeting with the next uh, with the main national and international entities that are related to social protection and also food security and nutrition. The uh, second phase was about gathering uh, information, as you were explaining before, the experts were explaining before. This uh, gathering of information was mainly nationally and with the inconvenience that in Paraguay at that moment, we did not have data that was the, directly related to nutrition or malnutrition in Paraguay or um, food security. But uh, we're going to say that this, uh, after an effect of the application of the, of the tool in the year 2022, in May 2022, we were able to apply the scale of experience of uh, food insecurity that shows information. And in that moment, in the year 2017, we did not have this information. So many of the analysis were centered in, uh, the, in the regional programs. So we had to adapt the questionnaire because as I said before, we were the first Latin American country we needed to translate the information from English to Spanish. And with the particularity that in, uh, in Paraguay, we also speak a second language, the Guarani, which is a native uh, language in, in our country that uh, almost everybody speaks. So this document had to go through that adaptation to Spanish and also to Guarani. The adaptation of this uh, questionnaire also was like the moment of adaptation. This was the richest moment because it meant that we had many uh, dialogues interagency, but also in interinstitutional and with the uh, players that were in the territories. Now about an analysis that we had before, at least the social ministry had not um, applied it, but it was about uh, dialoguing and analyzing about food security, about uh, food and about nutrition. And that was the biggest input of this process. When we already had the, the tool already validated nationally with the local players, we were able to have different workshops where we established this different uh, medicines that our colleague was explaining very recently. Um, and it, it is in the phase four that we had a very rich experience when we had to synthesize the information that we had received and put it into a national report. Well, the strengths of the tool, as I said before, the main thing is that it generated this reflection spaces about 
the uh, aspects of food security and nutrition strategically and also from the mission point of view. So in the implementation of the programs and the projects, and in this case, specifically in the uh, in this program. So it also enabled the identification of the information related to the program ECOPORA that previously were not visible and they were not taken into consideration. So it allowed us to identify with more clarity what were the inputs that the program had in terms of ensuring this, this human right to food. We also considered the learnings also in the designs of the program that complement the, uh, the TECO PORA program that is called ENODERA program. And uh, this is related to economic inclusion of the families that participated in the last um, parts of the TECO PORA program. So the concrete input is related to incorporating an indicator that it is, it is explicit about food security and nutrition in this uh, redesign of this program. So what were the main learnings uh, in the implementation phase? As I have said before, in the country context in the year 2017 and 2018, when we were implementing the tool, it was a process of finalizing one administration. So this meant many uh, movements uh, from the policies and the different officials. And we did not have a, a tool, uh, and we, don't, we didn't have an entity either that worked on this specifically. So along with the lack of data, nationally, we had difficulties in the callings that we made instit institutionally. But having to adapt the instrument to the national language that also generated some interpretations that were ambiguous about the items, um, we are going to say that all of this process uh, it was it was difficult, but it generated this a space for analysis, for self-analysis and for self-reflection that was very rich. We elaborated uh, additional instruments to be able to uh, carry out interviews according to the informant's profiles in the initial lines. This was not included. And we understand that it was this was also an input for the guidelines at a standardized level because well, we generated these instruments and we adapted them to local players. The results were visibilized, first of all, the program, the Tecopora program had a, an objective, a general objective that was related to the right of food and with a food bonus, but we needed to define and to visibilize other areas to improve the coverage of the four dimensions in food security that was already explained in terms of access, availability, uh, stability, and usability and nutrition. So, um, and this was also related to malnutrition. Um, this also allowed us to analyze and check the selection criteria of the participants and the requirements that well established by the program, the need to have more stability in the uh, services along the life cycle of the people. So the systematization of the impacts and the results to get to the people in the worst situation with more uh, food insecurity and, and nutritional vulnerability is central. And it is one of the main results that were visibilized. Continuing with the path of uh, complementing the program Tecopora with inclusion, productive and social economical in inclusion of the families that participated was very important. Also, the need to have an instance for uh, coordination intergovernmentally about uh, SAN uh, dealing with the inexistence of this space of interaction and coordination nationally. And what are the effects that we are going to find after four years, more or less, of having implemented this tool is that uh, food and nutrition is one of the dimensions in the National Pro Poverty Reduction Program uh, in Paraguay that was approved in 2020. It has one specific dimension for nutrition 
and food. The instruments of this plan incorporated the uh, national security system in the national household uh, registry and also the well-being matrix. There's a new manual for uh, workers of field in the program de Coporea that has this manuals. They have six big areas and one of, uh, of them is the dimension of food and nutrition that is directed to some recommendation and guidelines for the workers of uh, field for the Tecopora program to strengthen those capacities in the families. So we have these manuals that are recent from the year 2022. The use of recommendations for other actions that are innovative as for example, the uh, economic empowerment project of women and the strategies of social economy and solidarity, and also the strengthen uh, the strengthening of initiatives for family orchards and community orchards that had been done, but without the perspective of food security and nutrition in those four pillars of the SAN. So the continuity of the dialogues about the need to have a regulating entity in the governmental coordination space, which is turning into a framework program for human rights to proper nutrition that is now being studied in the parliament and where the Ministry of Social Development is uh, one of the main players. Well, that's it for me. I want to, I wanted to uh, show you our findings. Uh, the findings that we found in the application of this instrument and i am here for any question that you may have in the q a session thank you very much thank you rebecca for that excellent presentation it's lovely always to talk about tools but it's different when you see the application uh, in the context of a country so thank you very much for what you have presented uh, for us today we will now hear Mary Santana, who is from the Superate program from Dominican Republic. She will be giving us a synthesis of this program and how it seeks to connect to social nutrition program. This is a key aspect for ISPA, uh, which is what we will be presented today. Uh, Mary, thank you very much, Maurice. So can you hear me? Thank you. Good morning. As Mauricio was saying, this presentation is based on Superate program, which is overcome. Uh, it is uh, social security. Uh, how? From uh, social justice with the uh, system, we can uh, achieve the goals in the reduction of malnutrition. As I said, Superate is a governmental organization which was created by a law decree, uh, which is quite new of the last year, which presentation is to change the paradigm of social uh, vision, which is being applied in the country with a new strategy, which is comprehensive to overcome poverty. And we thought of Superate to take on poverty in a holistic manner but not in monetary uh, aspects. So it is within this presidential decree, which is this program, we created a, uh, different uh, components. And this one is particularly linked to food security. And one of these most important aspects, how the state presents this commitment to eradicate hunger and malnutrition and to work with the context of promotion of health and food security this component, health um, uh, emergency support, has four priority initiatives. One of them is a component, which is a transfer, which is monetary, and it's direct and governmental, linked towards the consumption, uh, the um, um, purchase of defined um, uh, food uh, purchase, and. What happens with Superate? It has 1,300,000 families that participate in it. The transfer is approximately $300 a month. 
the objective of Superate is to complement the resources of these households to purchase food. Um, these are vulnerable households. And then there are micronutrients, which are basically the delivery to family that have children of supplements, vitamin uh, supplements to prevent child malnutrition. And there are other two initiatives in the framework of this component. One of them is the Christmas bonus, which is a casos de, de sus casas for self-consumption. So this is for uh, families that are marginated. The main objective is to contribute. And facilitate to the communities, to the families, to know how is a healthy food system so that they know how they need to address this topic. I am, uh, nine, I have nine, 29 in the country and this program is a system for uh, agricultural, uh, agriculture that is protect, protected. That way they can produce certain uh, foods, for example, fresh vegetables. Here, for example, along with the FAO, we have a, a program that is called Villa Popi that was uh, born because of the need to move certain families that were doing agriculture in a protected area. And with that, move them from space to a land where they could uh, prop their seeds that was not in the protected area. Currently, as I said before, a 61%, which is 16 provinces, have some uh, caja sombra. So there are some families that are benefiting from this initiative. Along with this, we have the aquaculture uh, process that along with uh, fishing, we are using the recirculation of water for the production of vegetables. So we give the families not only um, products for the people, but also a, how to use this fish. And also they are presented with the future consumers and supermarkets until they uh, get purchased the excess of production. Um, apart from that, we have the organic um, greenhouses that will satisfy the needs of these families about the production of food. There are five rural communities up to now in provinces that are in the border. And in the countries, they are known because they are the ones that are the poorest. The achievements that we have had in this uh, organic orchards, it's to be able to uh, be together with his families and accompany them and for them to see that their products can be traded. We also have the fruit production and the family orchards. In here, we see people from different communities and for different, uh, different ages that can work in 
uh, in this family orchards and uh, fruit trees. So they get the seeds and the tools that they need. And we're also always with them so that they can use these resources in a, in a very uh, good way. We also have the uh, organic production, uh, the organic compost. So we give them the worms for the use of a worm culture. That way they can use the worms. So this production is really, really organic. So that has been um, very interesting. We signed with a, a certifying agency so that they can um, see if this is really organic through the worms. And we also have commercialization. The final objective of all of this dynamic is not just the work itself, but also the economic boost for the uh, communities so that they can know that the fruits, the products are uh, tradable and that it's in some point they stop depending from the program and government aid and they can turn into companies that are well established. The amount of participants, superate, or more than 1,440, which are achieving this, these are participants. And there are various supermarkets and uh, also gourmet stores, uh, which provide services to restaurants. They are purchasing through an alliance that's public and private that they are buying from the production of superate, to uh, use it in their restaurant, which has been extraordinarily uh, satisfactory for us. We have also had for these years, as far as financing, which is an agricultural um, bank, which is um, here to support the families and also with the UK embassy or with the um, food security. And of course, with the support of FAO, we have developed Four, uh, 24 productive centers in the different provinces within the country, the poor communities, of course, where we have continued developing this dynamic, which ha we have been working with, as I, as I was saying before, developing for the families. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Mary, for your presentation. Uh, the program Superate, has synergies and potential aspects to work jointly with social protection, the human right to food, the strengthening of family farming. And we see that you have a program that is very successful, which is what you provide us with this data. Now we're going to travel towards the Andean region and we're going to go to the presentation by Santiago Guayasamin from the Ministry of Economic Inclusion of El Salvador, which is going to present a brief synthesis of social protection policies from the government of Ecuador and particularly with the uh, child development and the bonus 2010, which and how this relates to um, food security. Santiago, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the invitation. Firstly, a uh, warm hello from the under the development minister from Veronica Keller, which is vice minister, and also uh, happy to be here and the public that is participating in order to share the experiences of Ecuador as far as food security, how we have worked on this, how we have been transforming social protection through the generation of public policies and their implementation within the territory. I will share with you a brief presentation where we have a framework of everything that relates to the public policy for comprehensive child development. We, from the Ministry of Social and Economic Inclusion, we tackle various access, access uh, from uh, discapacities, children, youth, 
but one of the important aspects for us is the public policy for the comprehensive aspect, which is destined for all children from zero to three years of age and women that are linked to the prevention, as uh, a health prevention, education, a family support, nutrition, and prevention to violence. Uh, this articulates is articulated with public policies through programs, projects, uh, strategies, uh, comprehensive child development services, which is linked to uh, uh, mothers, uh, children from zero to three years of age. How have we been working on this? We are going to set forth that in the year 2020, uh, the decree 1212, uh, we analyze the financial format uh, of what is required for children. We have different types of uh, uh, MIEs, which are comprehensive centers that are linked towards children from one age to three, uh, which are under poverty, extreme poverty and vulnerability. We have 132 direct um, uh, units and 984 educators. 1,885 agreement units and uh, with 8,422 educators, we're able to um, uh, treat children uh, of, uh, uh, of about 84,000 uh, children. We provide them food, a support, which is fundamental. And each one of these educators have nine children. Uh, that is four times, four times of food intake. And we will tell you later how we do this. Obviously, our budget is uh, not, uh, not univer uh, universal, so we cannot enter all the children. And we verify in the social register that which relates to poverty and extreme poverty. It is not that if the child is not registered, we have a, um, uh, a registration or a record of that child. Uh, we have approximately $114 million, which is what um, the um, government uh, invests in this. Uh, from this, uh, with the uh, program that is called Growing With Our Children, we serve 203,000 children with this. Part of this program is that we have a weekly um, in income where we give them advice uh, prenatal um, stimulation, health, nutrition, play, language, protective environments. We have uh, 45 concentrated in, in, um, areas and 35 in a disbursement uh, areas. It is a very important to understand that in this program, we have implemented everything related to family orchards in that which relates to the the local and cultural environment we articulate also in a cross sectorial manner with the uh, um, ministries of education, with uh, community groups, and also with the homes of the families. Um, we also uh, want uh, to make sure that we have the mother and also an adult that can be, uh, that serves children. We have 51, $31 million. Um, so we have in total, in most, both modality, almost $166 million that are invested on an annual basis in these services. services. I agree with each one of them uh, that these, sir, these uh, areas are fundamental and we have assigned 28,000 uh, uh, users and six and 600 uh, 66,798 that are served. We have more than 2,000 uh, service units in our modality where we serve uh, with different Afro-ethnic uh, identified with a number of people, Afro-Equatorian, Montubio, and Indigenous. And we have a bilingual intercultural, intercultural education. We have the food um, uh, a school food, uh, which begins uh, for children at 36 months. We have different groups, ethnic groups, and the whole uh, development 
of rights. And that which refers to food security are comprehensive centers for children. We have an externalized food service. We, that is, we hire organizations of popular and solidarity uh, food services that will provide these services. And we, the Mies has uh, created an investment that manages all the implementation and technological processes and administrative financial process where we can evaluate through the good practices of manufacturing uh, to know who are providing the food in an adequate manner and who are not in order to make decisions on public policies based on facts. We make decisions based on facts. We don't have other arguments. It's all based on data. We have a, a nutritional system uh, which covers 75% of the nutritional recommendations on a daily basis. 25% is uh, obligation of uh, to cover by the parent in their household. Ooh, how do we do this? So we have healthy menus, that which is hired, they generate these menus for five weeks for their implementation and they are approved by our center coordinator based on norms and protocol and external protocols. We have the breakfast from eight to 8.30. Always we have milk, a solid a portion of fruit, egg, the manner in which it's prepared, it's very much linked to the local patterns of food. We do not intervene with local manner. We other uh, addition we have, uh, like for example, uh, boiled uh, banana and milk, uh, warm egg and a portion of papaya. In the middle of the day, we attend from 10.30, we give them a small fruit, solid cereal, guineo and a different and a small uh, bread type at lunch. They have soup. Um, a main dish, a salad, a juice, a liquid. They also have um, chard, uh, rice, uh, meat, salad, and uh, sometimes in the in, and, and in the afternoon, of course, cereal and uh, some sort of sweet uh, food. We have a great amount of family and uh, ma maternity uh, groups, um, breastfeeding mothers, of course. And we worked with nutritional um, uh, sheets, which educators have to uh, comply with, not only in nutrition, we have to make sure that this is linked to health, food, nutrition through the process of all the different advices through the different uh, uh, centers. This is within the stream work of having a nutritional system for children. Uh, and we work, of course, with different processes, the washing of hands, uh, breastfeeding, um, hygiene, and water and safe water consumption. We work with how the food is consumed, how the water, uh, how the food is cooked, because we want to make sure that our families are receiving adequate um, food intake. Uh, we also have something called uh, infancy, uh, future infancy bonus, uh, which to reduce six points disnutrition in uh, malnutrition in children. We want to guarantee the protection and the right of children from the pregnancy to two years of age through a minimum uh, uh, baseline of uh, nutritious food. We don't only motivate the delivery of the bonus, but also we have co-responsibility in health and comprehensive um, uh, upbringing of children. The mothers that receive this bonus must be a part of the uh, comprehensive system. We have 37,506 women that have been identified, but until 2025, we expect to have uh, 84,000 uh, beneficiaries of this bonus. Currently, we have 25,553. This is uh, from August. What is the basis of this? As I said before, we began with the idea that we have a baseline of a certain amount of dollars that is linked to co-responsibility of the parents. That is the medical so, uh, monthly uh, supervision of the children until the uh, ending of the pregnancy. In the first and second uh, year of life where the children needs the highest amount of nutrients, both girls and boys, of course, have 120 
dollars, which is a fixed amount, which is conditioned to the co-responsibility of the family. And in 2022, we're going to have an investment of $12,370,000 in that which relates to the bonus of uh, uh, the nutrition for children. That is what it looks like uh, when tackling chronic malnutrition in our uh, government and we make available to our users, which are uh, poor and extre in extreme poverty. Thank you, Santiago, for that extraordinary presentation. Uh, we're very thankful, Santiago. Very, very uh, thank you very much. It is quite extraordinary what you're doing with the school program in Ecuador. and and the link uh, that you have directly with this kind of initiative and the tool that you have and that you've presented today. And now, before we go to the following section of the Q&A for our panelists, I would like to just mention that the tool is not only available in Spanish, it is available also in English, in French, ha Arabic, and Russian, since it is an official tool uh, of FAO within the uh, United Nations. And now we have a very interesting part in the webinar where we can discuss with our panelists. And for that, we have received certain questions through uh, the different chats that we have made available. And we will go to Q&A, which are going to be very short. I cannot give you more than two minutes, each panelist, so that you can have short interventions, but very interesting without a doubt. Uh, we will start with Veronica. Veronica, could you please uh, underline once again in just a few words which are the elements that are key for ASPA tools, F, uh, as son for governments, and where can we find more information for these tools? As
you very much, Veronica. It, it sound, it's telling us for the multi, uh, multiple agency and multiple viewpoints that need to be implemented here. There is a short question to Maya. Maya, tell us a little bit about the uh, short and medium uh, or long term of the tool ISPA in the context of Latin America and the Caribbean. What can you tell us about it? Thank you, Mauricio. Well, uh, thank you for the excellent presentations. Uh, truly, it gives us uh, much motivation. This exercise or this, um, this virtual seminar, what we want to is underline the possibility of having this tool in Spanish and also of the uh, Spanish speaking countries, only Paraguay and uh, our star country there that uh, uh, helps us enormously in disseminating this information. In this course also, we believe we can generate a great deal of interest. And we have here Ecuador and uh, uh, Dominican Republic that are also examples of countries that promote these links with uh, security and, nutri and nutrition, for security and nutrition. Our interest is that we can generate demands on this a little bit what uh, Veronica said, the, um, uh, there are expect, this is an expectation where we can uh, implement it during the a period of six months and at least one facilitator that's an expert on the topic. And through FAO, we can train or follow uh, up with other countries in addition to uh, uh, Paraguay, this was done in Cambodia and in Palestine, which are contexts which are quite complex, but it was implemented uh, with a great deal of success in Malawi also. Uh, there are donors that are interested, so we have to seek uh, potential donors uh, within the groups that I support uh, with the ISPA tool and the other tools uh, that are ISPA related so that we can have the possibility of applying it here in the year to come. We are available to all the countries uh, to help you implementing, uh, implement it. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. And from the outset, I apologize. We're not going to have the possibility to go deeper into all the questions set forth by the panelists. The presentations were well a wealth of uh, information. So we're going to go towards our closure. And for that, we have the presentation by Lynette Yufon, who is going to give us some final observations that have to do with everything that we have been discussing today. Lynette, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Bef, um, I would like to thank, uh, to start, we would like to thank you for participating in this on time um, um, intervention. I worked in the region before coming to FAO in the implementation of social protection assessment and programs. It is a topic that is very close to my heart. As we have heard, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and the conflicts and in the increase of food and uh, fuel, there is an increase in food insecurity, malnutrition in Latin America and the, the entire world. The region has a major challenge, persists the uh, nutrition issues, uh, the anemia, low, low development, lack of nutrients, but also the region has one of the highest prevalences of obesity and overweight in the world. As we all know, the problems of malnutrition has multiple causes, but the diets, non-healthy diet is a major factor amongst all of them. The, the food insecurity can take inefficiency, hunger, but also sometimes it takes the consumptions of high calorie and low nutrient content. And this contributes to overweight, obesity, and in many occasions, which coincide with deficiency of micronutrients. As we all know, these problems affect disproportionately to uh, vulnerable uh, groups, which are undergoing uh, a, a poverty environment and that 
have been affected by historical and current uh, social situations. Social protection has a fundamental role in uh, uh, taking on these inequities. There is a great deal that I can comment on the wealth of discussions that we've had today, but I would like to underline three points. Firstly, I would like to congratulate you for the work, uh, essential work that you have done with this tool. Through the years, we have generated a rich base of evidence that social uh, protection programs have an enormous potential potential to in, improve food security and improve the nutrition uh, quality. But this evidence also indicates that this potential is done exclusively under certain conditions. When the design of the programs respond to the real conditions of the population and uh, their needs in the context at the local context. When a monitoring and a continuous a program to adjust uh, appropriately the uh, design and implementation. It is there when you start seeing the re in reality the implementation of these programs on site and when they reach the popu at the uh, needed population. There are many factors that are and considerations that are additional, but the generation and consolidation of evidence and the process of decision-making that is done through this tool, that is achieved through this tool, can guide this process in a comprehensive and systematic manner. And this is a great progress. I would like to underline and recognize the efforts carried out by some of the uh, trials that have been presented, the translation of the questionnaires in various languages, as was mentioned, uh, the determining factors of malnutrition and the opportunities to improve it through the social protection must reflect these variabilities in its implementation and design. And this can only be done with a, a diagnosis, with a dialogue uh, with the community in the context and in their language and adapting it appropriately to their uh, lifestyles, as was mentioned in the case of Ecuador. Secondly, although the data and evidence in the local context is fundamental for the implementation and design of effective uh, actions, it is, at the end of the day, as one in many factors that will make uh, the decisions in policies and programs. The process that is inclusive in the participation of different factors at the outset is a great strength. Without this inclusiveness, you will not always link with the various activities that needs to uh, play a role in nutrition as such an, a good example that was presented by the Dominican Republic. Finally, we must remember the various uh, manners of malnutrition the size, we, uh, there is a strong component of intergenerational ef effects. And this is why we do not see the effects in such a short term with malnutrition in, in the infancy and the individual affects his growth and the state of his nutrition and their future um, children. I mentioned this, which is why it is so critical to continue investing in social protection. The only way to eradicate these effects at the intergenerational level is to reduce poverty in an effective and long lasting manner with specific aspects directed to vulnerable groups, uh, more vulnerable groups, for example, children. This I mentioned because the situation, the current situation of food insecurity and malnutrition is in continuous means. We need the programs to overcome these moments of media, which are linked to programs on a long-term basis. As we've heard here, this commitment already exists in many countries of the region, but there's much more to yet to be done. The present this course presents an important opportunity to report educate and promote 
the long-term commitment, which is so critical to break the malnutrition and which has its roots in poverty and inequity. Thank you very much uh, again for the invitation. Thank you very much, Lynette, for that wonderful um, summary of what we have been talking about during the seminar. I believe it has been a wealth of information and very specific to what we can learn and the expected learnings uh, that we want to thank each and every one of the invited, our colleagues at FAO, uh, ILO, and also the representatives or the, uh, the uh, representatives of Ecuador. Uh, and it is always a pleasure at FAO to collaborate with you. And also uh, somehow, I would like to congratulate the support that we received during the design of this tool, which was uh, uh, GIZ, the World Bank, um, uh, uh, PNA and EPC, and also thank each and every one of you that participated in the, the those that participated in the webinar and followed us in their social networks from these different dialogues. We had more than 750 people connected on different platforms. Therefore, once again, thank you very much and have a lovely afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you.